This one looks like a kinematics problem. You throw a baseball horizontally from a 10 meter building, but then you're asked something a little bit different. You're asked uh, what velocity do you throw it at so that it strikes the ground at 30 degrees to the normal. So I want to show you how to do problems where you're asked about the direction of the path. So first let's draw it real quick. We've got our 10 meter building and then the ground. And we've got a ball with an initial velocity, which I'll go ahead and label VXI because it's only in the X direction. And you know what's going to happen. The ball is going to follow kind of a horizontal or a uh, parabolic trajectory like that. And you want to make sure you know what it, the question means when it says 30 degrees to the normal. So it's hitting the ground 30 degrees to the normal. That means normal to the ground. Normal means perpendicular. So if we were going to draw the perpendicular to the ground at the point of contact, it would look something like that. So the angle you want is right there. They want that to be 30 degrees. You can see actually the angle is changing as the, as the uh, trajectory moves forward. The angle between the path and this is changing because you know the direction of it is changing. But really just in the limit right at the point, they want that to be 30 degrees. So the angle of a path, you might think you get it from your position vector. After all, this is the position path. But actually you don't, because if you remember, your position vectors look like this. Right? There's a position vector at one time, there's a position vector at another time. It's not the position that tells you the angle, it's the displacement. It's the change in position that tells you the angle. But rather than constantly calculate displacements, we have something proportional to displacement, and that's velocity. Right? Velocity is delta r over delta t. So if we imagine a real small delta t, we could basically just think about the velocity components at any point. So if you think about this as the velocity is along the path, it's got a component this way and a component that way, it's really the velocity that we want um, to figure this out. So let's just give ourselves some bullets to remember for future problems. Um, the angle of a path depends, or um, angle of path is equal to the angle of the velocity vector. All right. Now the exact formula you would use to get that angle, well, that kind of depends on the geometry of the problem. But we know we need to find the velocity vector right when it strikes, which is basically right here. All right, so that's what we're looking for right there. So let's think, what else do we know about this problem? We know we have Vx because Vx initial, there's no acceleration in the x, Vx is not going to change. So we actually know this component. We just need to find Vy, right? So we need to find Vy. We have Vx. Let's get Vy from pretty much in y, it's just going to drop. So we just do 1D kinematics. 1D kinematics. Just fit. And we think about this problem, we are talking about accelerating for a distance. So remember we have that one magic formula. If you accelerate from a distance, we combine two equations to find uh, that the final velocity squared, there's what we're looking for, the final velocity, the final y velocity squared, equals the initial y velocity squared, that's zero, right? we have no initial y velocity, plus two, acceleration is negative 9.8, and then d is 10. And you see, wait, we're going to have a problem here, this is imaginary, we have a square root of a negative number, oh no, but remember this is delta y. Right? If that's delta y, it's final minus initial, zero minus 10, ah, oh, this is negative 10. There we go. So this turns out to be 196, and the square root then gives you um, y final is 14 meters per second. So now we have the x component, or no, we need, we're looking for the x component, and, uh, but now we have the, the y component, 14 meters per second. All right, let's see, what else uh, do we have to do? Um, now we need the, uh, we're looking for, uh, oh, well, oh, yeah, now we're done. <laughs> So I forgot, we have the angle, right? So we have 30 degrees. So now we want to think about what angle we're looking for. We were asked for theta right here, 
and we know that's the same as this theta if you've had a little geometry because the angle across from two parallel lines uh, is equal. So then we know that there's this component and then there, there's this component. So there's the Vx we're looking for right there. So that it would be tangent, right? The tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. So we say the tangent of that 30 degrees is the Vx component over the 14 meters per second, the uh, Vy component. You may say, now wait a minute, I thought tangent was always y over x component, y component over x. That depends on how you set up the angles. Right? So when you set up angles beyond just the standard definition of angle, the x's and y's can be flipped. And they are in this case. So if you solve this, the tangent of 30 times 14, you get 8.08 .08 meters per second. And if you need 8.08 .08 meters per second here, it's the same velocity here because in the x, nothing is changing. So that's how you do problems where you're asked for the angle of the path. You think about the velocity vector. Now, there are sort of two ways to approach kinematics problems like this. If you have a good intuition for it, and you've memorized your equations, and you kind of know which ones to use when, you're good at picking them, you can do it like this. This is the most straightforward way to do it. Figure out you need Vy, realize you're accelerating for a distance, remember that equation, and go from there. There's another way to do it, though, that is not really always shorter, but it's a little bit better if you're not really sure what to do. The other way to do these problems is simply to say, I am going to write the position vector and the velocity vector. And when I'm asked a question, I'm just going to apply the question to the position and velocity vectors. So let's look at that real quick and see what that will look like. To write, Let's write them over here. To write the position and velocity vectors, you just take each one and you write its x and y component and you just use the standard kinematics equation. x final equals x initial plus vx initial t plus one half ax t squared. That thing, you just apply that in x and you apply it in y. And a lot of terms will be zero. All right, so uh, x initial, zero. vx initial, well, we have that. That's the thing we're looking for, t plus one-half acceleration in the x, t squared, well, that's zero. We have no acceleration in the x because we're doing gravity acceleration here. So that's the i-hat component of the position vector. And then we can do the y. The y does have an initial, 10, and then it has no initial, it does have an initial position. It has no initial velocity, so that term isn't there. And then it's basically minus one-half gt squared because it does have an acceleration down. And I'm gonna take a quick shortcut shortcut, and uh, now I'm going to leave that as minus one-half, 9.8 uh, t squared, j hat. There we go. So I just wrote, um, I just wrote the position vector. Now I can write the velocity vector. Once you have position vector, it's easy to write the velocity vector, you just take the derivative. So the derivative here is the velocity in the x initial i hat. So that's a constant, that's what we know, it goes at constant x. Plus, derivative of that is zero, two and the half cancel, so it's really, uh, the minus is still there, so it's minus, and I'm gonna switch back to g, g, t, j hat. So there's r and v, or position and velocity. So you write those, and then you go back to the question and say, what is it I need, I need to know? And you would have to know the part about uh, that uh, tangent theta is vx over vy. This isn't going to do that part for you, right? So you'd say tangent theta, tangent in this case 30 degrees, is the vx that you're looking for over, and then vy. You just come here and you read off vy, right? Minus gt. vx over minus gt. All right. But then that's a specific t. That's the time when it hit, right here. So let's call that t hit. Vx over minus gt hit. So really, that's what you could use to solve for vx. You know g, g is just a constant, which I'm going to draw a little nicer. But th is unknown. The hit time, the time that it hits the ground, is unknown. Well, how do you get that? You just go to the equations. What here is going to tell us when it hit the ground? And you say, well, when it hits the ground, the y position is zero. So you just set this equal to zero and solve for t. And that's the time it hit the ground. So you say, okay, 10 
minus. Uh, I'll go ahead and call that 4.9 uh, t squared equals 0. So 10 divided by 4.9, that's about 2 square root, yada yada. You get uh, that the t hit is about 1.43. t hit equals 1.43. Uh, three, yeah, four, three seconds. And I should put T hit there too, because that's the time it's at zero. So then you just plug this into there. And you solve for Vx, right? You have this is a number, 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 and you solve that for Vx, and you get about, uh, this time I got 8.09 meters per second. X I. So I got the same answer. So here we did it kind of with our intuition and our knowledge of when to use different formulas. Here we did it straight from just R and B. Both will always work. Some problems, one is easier, some problems, the other is easier. You just need to decide which you're more comfortable with.